I'm doing a client session. This is a follow-up session. If you're interested in checking out previous sessions, please check out the description. The most previous session I did for this client, we explored some really interesting phenomenon <laughs> ideas. I'll give you guys some examples. Okay. We explored the number combination 17546. We explored the letter combination AAA. So this client has a connection with these different details. Okay. So we were looking into what is your connection with this stuff? Um, we checked out the crown chakra a little bit. Um, one other one was looking into black dots in the white area of the left eye, about six to eight and around half circle around the iris. So we looked into a bunch of different things. So in this session, we're going to start by focusing on a relationship with the sun. So the request is, can you take us to the core of the sun in Earth's solar system? Assuming spirit is cool with that. If we can't be in the core, the closest possible would be great. So we're going to do that. If there's time, then we're going to check out constellations and their alpha stars. I do not know how to pronounce all these. <laughs> I will put information in the description if you're interested in, in knowing the specific constellations and alpha stars. Um, but we're definitely going to start with the sun and then see what um, time we have for the constellations, okay? Oh man, this is going to be so great. Okay, I'm going to relax now and get tuned in. Okay, different things are happening. It's a little hard to talk through. It's surreal. It's not what you would think, okay? <laughs> I experience myself with an energetic helmet on. I experience myself like this, but I'm also looking at you, and you are somebody who has an energetic helmet on. <laughs> We're on a barren planet. It looks completely... I mean, it feels alive to me. It feels 110% alive, but it's made out of just what is like dirt. But it's more grainy like sand, but it's not sand. And it has some moisture to it. But it just seems like dirt everywhere. And different sort of levels of dirt. So there's a much taller hill over here. And then it's sort of flat for a while. But there's kind of like canyons in a way. It's all dirt. But it's grainy dirt. So with this energy helmet I see that you have on... You, there's all it's red in color and it's made out of energy it's almost like it has its own aura and it's living red light and I can see perfectly through it but I also can see it so it looks like a real helmet but it's made out of energy and the helmet um, has different symbols on it all over this helmet and it's got a technological way about it Almost like you could say it's a computer, but it seems to respond to your thoughts. So you activate different runes. You could call them runes. They're symbols. And you use your eye. You use your eye to do this. <sighs> Interesting because it's reminding me of the black dots. No. Okay, hold on. There's some energy release here. Because your third eye from the human world is, and your conscious mind is being introduced to what is beneath the surface of your conscious mind, okay? So you're, there's a rec recall happening. I am discovering that this is more than just a helmet. It seems to be a suit made out of energy. And it seems to be completely alive. Living energy, it is alive and it is like a technology. It's almost like water in a way, perfectly clear, perfectly see-through. Somehow it works with the element of water. And it's really receptive to your conscious mind, your thoughts, your directed thoughts. And your eye, one of your eyes, it seems to be the left eye.
What's interesting is now that I've said all of this, I experience an opening of the throat and ability to breathe. I feel really, really relaxed, really peaceful. I feel like I'm doing a job, a duty. But it doesn't feel like work at all. I'm not sure what the task is. It doesn't necessarily say it is an explorer either, although it feels like an explorer. I'm still looking for the sun, but it's nowhere to be seen. Somehow the sun is here. Somehow the presence of the sun is in this experience. Okay, I'm going to be a little more interactive with me as a persona here with you, and I'm going to stop you. You seem to be talking to this energy that you're surrounded by, and you're communicating with it. You're learning things is what it's like. I'm just going to touch you and then see what happens. I'm going to interact more with the image of you. You're nervous. You're in a hurry. So I'm slowing you down. You're, you're definitely not wanting that. Stepping into your shoes, into your feet, inside of this device. I tell you you're safe. I need you to trust me. Nothing is going to hurt you. You're really, really uncomfortable about something. It feels like it has to do with this planet that you're on. Almost like there's more to it. It's it's a living planet, even if it looks like it's just made out of dirt. You seem to be aware that there you may not be the only person here. You are not choosing to receive my influence <laughs> you are continuing to whatever it is you're doing it seems like um it would be on our human level the idea of taking samples and measuring things um taking readings of gravity but it, it, on the level of what this is it seems diff seems like something of this kind but it's not necessarily saying that's what you're doing okay i still don't know why you're on this planet you're really nervous, you're really in a hurry, you're concerned. I am still working on helping you to trust me. And I am taking on the persona of an actual spirit that is with you at this time, in this experience. And this spirit is relentlessly trying to help you feel safe and to relax. You're going to be okay. It's almost like this messenger, the spirit, is trying to help you understand that you're going to miss something very, very important if you can't relax, if you can't slow down, if you can't trust that you are safe. Your mechanism, this energy thing, is not reading. It doesn't appear to be reading this spirit interaction with what is your physical persona in this scene. I keep, I'm starting to feel like 
it's getting harder to breathe. Starting to feel like I'm running out of air. <laughs> All right. My guides are talking to me about something that's a bit surreal to think about. This is complicated to just simply talk about because it, it's hard to parallel what this is going on here because it's, it's got such a technological advanced persona to it, but it also it feels like it has some kind of humanistic feelings, nervousness, anxiety, uncertainty, um, collecting information of some kind. So the next experience I have is there's some kind of malfunction with this energy shield and the rune. Something isn't responding. Something isn't functioning right with it. The experience of not being able to breathe and worry that I will suffocate. Now this survival mechanism is somehow, obviously, us, our physical body, us surviving is number one. Anything else doesn't matter. So I'm going to do what I can to survive. This spirit persona is saying, it's almost saying you were meant to, to end your, for your life to end here. So why don't you enjoy the experience of the last moments of your life? The spirit persona is really trying to get you, you in a different body, in a different time, in a different place, to embrace the place that you are in, to embrace this as your grave. But that's not a disappointment. There's something very glorious and very special about to happen here. And the encouragement is for you to feel safe. For you to trust that you are in the right place at the right time. Then you are going to have to override your survival instincts. There's no getting off of this. There's no leaving this planet. You need to think about that for a minute. You need to think about the idea of living a life, finding yourself in an experience where you are surviving, okay? But you don't know that this is the end of that experience because you're in the state of surviving. So you're not being open-minded to the other pathways one of which will be the inevitable pathway. There is no avoiding the inevitable, which is then going to become your death. So how do you make the most of a death that you aren't prepared for, that you aren't going to give up on your survival in order to embrace it? You aren't even going to give it a second thought. So this spirit is here to help you because this is supposed to be a profound end to your life, not a survival um, death. <laughs> death. I tried my best and then I died. It, it's actually, there's supposed to be some kind of um, very special gift at the end of this life. But there is going to be that element of friction because you're going to avoid the gift by trying to survive. However, you won't be able to survive, so you might as well forget it and just let yourself experience the event. And it feels like the sun, okay? But let, let's just see what happens next. No, 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 no. You won't stop. You won't accept it. You won't accept it. You won't accept it. So this is the next step. <laughs> Natural. <sighs> A lot of stress. <laughs> A lot of stress. It's scary. It's scary. <sighs> it's literally slow suffocation. <sighs> With a hope for change. 
the spirit never leaves you. Spirit is encouraging you to relax, to think here for a minute. What is the concept of knowing there's nothing else you can do? There's nothing else you can do. Because the, this is supposed to be received by your soul. This is supposed to be a gift f to your soul. It's, it's, a com it's a complicated death, but it does not have to be at all. It could be the most glorious death you ever had. You have to somehow let go of the survival instinct. You have to somehow accept that there's nothing else you can do. And now allow the inevitable to happen. You're fighting it. You're fighting it. It's getting warmer, just so you know. It feels like... It feels like the sun is all around us. Like, we are so close to the sun, it's ridiculous. But I can't see it anywhere. I'm like, where's the sun at? I don't see the sun. I see dirt everywhere. <laughs> I see, a, like, a universe, but I see a lot of dirt on this planet. Okay, something is, you're becoming aware of something. And I start to see that red's aura, it's like a red energy, is you're, you're somehow acknowledging that it is, it is no sense fighting it. And I see the red aura just, it's disappearing. I can still see the clear, what is, um, an energy bodysuit, basically. But it, in itself, it's like it's drying up. But you're also kind of... You turned off that red aura. It's like red fire, but it's clear. And you can see it sometimes when I look at you from different directions. I can see it coming off of the... What is like a clear orb around your head and then it's like a outline on around your body and it has to do with the element of water and it's alive but this is drying up and it's not um responding to your thoughts quite the same way man this is giving me a hardcore headache this is, this is like your third eye is looking at this <laughs> you are having a th thoughts about this okay No, it feels like it's just you here. In this living planet, that's just what is like made out of dirt. And something is kicking in of, on a psychic or empathic level. And you're acknowledging the spirit that's here. And you're saying, okay. You still haven't accepted or, I mean, you haven't quite stated that, okay, I, I admit there's nothing else I can do. I will die here. You have not said that. However, you're acknowledging it. You just aren't going to state that. Hmm. His spirit is male and he's... <laughs> he's very lighthearted. He's pretty excited that you are choosing to pay attention and listen to what he's trying to tell you because it's really special. He's going to give you some instructions and they're going to seem a bit ridiculous. Okay, this is ridiculous. One is, like, to remove the entire suit, to remove all of it, just to turn it all off, to shut it down, to be completely exposed to the planet. This planet is extremely cold. And now that you've done that, I feel so freaking cold. It's just, it's like, 
there's no ice anywhere but it's cold it's like the feeling of halloween if you live in the north like it it doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be snow on the ground and it can be cold you might want to wear a jacket under your halloween costume there's even some cold breeze that blows through he's uh this this you is listening to the planet now with your own ears and somehow the atmosphere of the planet is alive and is communicating with you on a psychic level actually is the spirit of this jolly man that's trying to get your attention and What's interesting is you don't know this, but the planet was lonely and you came to help this planet to seed the planet with your biological matter so the planet could experience life. This also has something to do with the dots in your eyes, okay? In your eye, okay? There's some connection between this lifetime and the dots in your eye. So this is really special because now you're able to communicate with the planet and the planet is actually, it told you it would nurture you and it would not be a a painful or scary death that it would find a way to help you feel safe because it also knew you wouldn't be able to survive on the planet but that it wanted to be special for you I mean, in a way the planet loves you so much it's like it's like the ultimate companion the ultimate lover like it's not about like you are giving such a precious gift to this planet that the planet couldn't help but give all that it can to help you in your last moments of life and to be grateful for the gift that you are that you gave I start to see your face is, is I don't know it's turning white you actually have quite brown skin and it's turning white and it's like white is moving across your face it's like your skin is becoming white but it's not hurting you for some reason. It's changing you. You're going into an alter st alternate state of mind and this alternate state of mind, it may only last seconds, but it could feel like a very long time actually. You go through a gateway where you're talking to the spirit of the planet in the astral plane. And Okay, this is this is con complicated, but it, I know it's simpler than this. <sighs> Basically, you already died and you're now free from your body. However, you didn't you didn't know you had already died so in a way you're still alive in the body even though the body is dead so that's why it feels like a few seconds could be then eternity but this was a, an essential part of it because now the spirit of yourself is a part of the spirit of the planet so your body died but your spirit remained in astral with the spirit of the planet And this planet is super, super wise, like older, very, very old energy, very old consciousness and shares with your soul, seeds your soul with what it's seen. So your soul can take that energy back to anywhere in the universe. While you also are seeding this soul with everything you've seen, also with your biological deposit <laughs> your body remains on the planet however it is giving the planet the information it needs to create life there 
And in this other astral version of the planet, it's full of gardens. Very thick. Thick, 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 thick gardens. It would be very hard to walk through here. It's almost like they're growing on top of each other. It's so thick with gardens. And his spirit is very in tune with, completely in tune with nature. And like an architect of nature. I mean, it is different. It is really different. It's cool. <laughs> I asked, so what does this have to do with the sun? There's a communication. And it sounds like OM. It sounds like a very long time of wisdom. It's, it's like time that is not documented by the rising and the setting of the sun. So what is the time on this planet? If there is no sun, it's literally what it is saying. Hmm. Say, so what does this have to do with the sun? That was one thing that I could feel in the livingness of this planet that was made out of dirt. It was warm. Like, the sun was always there. But I never could see the sun. I see a part of your spirit is still um, intermingling with this planet. That you're very, like, vibrationally, um, like, bonded buddies, okay? <laughs> like, really great friends. And it feels like it's time for you to move on from this planetary consciousness. Because it has been too far away from the sun for you. There's something about yourself that carries the sun, and you bring the sunlight with you. You shared the sun with the planet. The planet was in the dark. You came to shine light for this planet, and the planet then became alive because of you. It's interesting because they're showing me a time, and our idea of time is so different than what it would be like on this planet so different it's almost like time stops where this planet is time's always in motion here and we experience that because of the sun the gift of the sun but you were the gift of the sun for this planet you were the sun for this planet isn't that so interesting but now your soul after that, you're still somehow connected to this lifetime. And it's time that I, I, it's time that you go. It's time that you say goodbye. And it's hard to define how long this has been. But I'm, I am to release you from this connection so that you can, this part of you can come back to yourself with the seeds of wisdom and awareness that you have developed with this planetary being. To bring it back to yourself. It's really, really amazing. It's This is an important event for you. And the bond you're developing with the energy and consciousness of the sun. So. He's, the planetary energy is already... He says he he will. It's not like um, separation because you've you've grown together, and so wherever you go, up, uh, you know the seeds of what who and what he is will always be with you, and those seeds you carry with you to plant in other planets, um, through across other lives. So it's pretty extraordinary, and he doesn't feel sad about that. 
He knows it's time. And he's so freaking blessed and so thankful for you. Like so, 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 so thankful for you. There's so much more to this story. <laughs> A lot more to this story. Because there's this process of you returning to yourself. And believe it or not, there's what is like lifetimes in connection with the process of your this astral version of you coming back to yourself. And while you were gaining so much, um, thriving so much in the environment with this planetary consciousness... You, had, you have to balance that energy because part of it was also cold and disconnected. Um, just like the planet was going through, feeling cold and disconnected, and you brought the sunlight. So you both um, became friends, okay? And shared a great deal with each other. But in that sharing, you received part of his burden, which is the cold disconnect. Um, so now I'm seeing lifetimes um, working through feeling the warmth again inside yourself, bringing the sunlight, that balance back to you. So you had this calling with this planet, you followed through with it. Um, I mean, this is extraordinary stuff. This is extraordinary stuff. So what I'm doing is I'm touching what could only be defined as, I mean, in my vision, I see different versions of lives. What do they look like? <laughs> They feel like cold stone, all right? That's what they look like to me. They feel like cold stone, and that's what they look like. So when I touch the cold stone lifetimes, um, I'm bringing warmth to them because it's just it just felt like such a cold disconnect. And that is bringing warmth to your heart. Hmm. Warmth to your third eye. The stress, it's alleviating the stress. You're super relaxing now. You're just so in awe of this self-awareness. And I see a very special angel, like a new angel guide. I feel the experience of angelic energy and an angel you haven't met yet in this life, okay? You have not worked with this angel. And it's a male energy. I feel him coming to support you in this, this soul transformation. I mean, it's a soul transformation. It's um, travel. It's movement. It's growth. It's self-discovery. It's reconnecting with the sunlight within you. You're a carrier of the sunlight. I mean, your relationship with the sun is more extraordinary and like really a big, a lot to say about that. Um, so this is a really great place to just allow you to process all of this stuff. And then there's, we will see what comes up in the next session. Okay. <laughs> all right. I am really excited for you and this was so cool. Thank you so, so much. I know it's a little bit of a weird session, like, what am I supposed to do with that, Abby? You own it, man. You own it. You own what an interesting, unique, and amazing soul you are. You get excited about your renewed relationship with the sun, because it's only going to be more amazing than it's ever been before. And you open your heart to discovering new angelic energy here to support you in your life. And just be ready for, um, for the these seeds of new awareness to sort of ignite, enlighten, activate um, new visions of awareness through your human experience. So you do that, okay? <laughs> All right.
Thank you so much. This was so awesome. And for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.